Hello everyone. In this lecture, we will solve the Cauchy problem of an infinite string with initial condition. Now look at this problem. This is the problem of wave equation which we have discussed in the previous lectures. Now how can we say that this is a problem of infinite string? Look at this. This is the wave equation of one dimension. Clear? Here look at this condition x belongs to R. X belongs to R means X is a real number. So it may be any infinite term. Clear? That's why we are saying this is a problem of infinite string. So it is important to see this condition. This will decide whether it is a problem of infinite string or finite string. Clear? So these are initial conditions. This is the initial displacement and this is the initial velocity. Clear? Now look at this. Previously we have taken the equation in the form of two variables x and y here we have taken in the form of t and x it means now in place of x we have written t in place of y we have written x clear so if you compare this equation with the second order linear partial differential equation then you can write the equation in the form of variable t and x like a u t t plus b u t x plus c u x x equal to the function of all these remaining variables Clear. So compare all these coefficients, then you will get a 1 b equal to 0 and c equal to minus c squares. From there you will calculate b square minus 4 is and which is c square and c square is a square of c. That's why always it will be greater than 0. That's why this equation is hyperbolic. Clear? So if it is hyperbolic, it simply means now you will get two characteristic equation. Clear? So how can we write characteristic equation? When you write this equation in the form of x and y, then you write dy by dx. But here we have written in place of y, we have written x and in place of x, we have written t. It means now in place of dy by dx, we will write dx by dt. So dx by dt, this equal to b plus minus and root b square minus 4ac by 2a and this is plus minus. Clear? And solve these two equations, you will get two curves. One is x minus ct equal to c1, another is x plus ct equal to c2. Now these are the new transformations. So you can assume one as z equal to x minus ct or eta equal to x plus ct. So all these things are already discussed. So no need to describe again. So you will calculate ux, uxx, u, ut, uxx, utt. Clear? So you will get these values. Now coming to the solution. Clear? So this was the equation. Just go to the page number 120 of this book of the book which I have provided to you. So this is the problem This I have shown you how can we uh, get this equation. So these are two transformations as I told you. So if you put all these values, all the partial derivatives in original equation this one, then you will get this equation minus 4c square u xi eta equal to 0. Clear? So from there you will get this required equation u xi eta equal to 0 which you know that for parabolic and so for hyperbolic we get this kind of equation when you transform from uh, one variable uh, from the initial variable to another variable clear so this is the required equation canonical form now to solve this equation first integrate it with respect to xi if you integrate it with respect to xi then you will get here u eta n because this is zero so you will get a constant but here this constant should be in the term of eta because we are integrating it with respect to xi so we have written a function this psi star is nothing to do with this star this is simply a function why we have considered this star you will understand later on okay just simply assume this is a function of eta because here we cannot take constant because this is a u is a function of xi and eta that's why whenever we are integrating it with respect to xi then you will consider constant as a function of eta because with respect to xi eta will be treated as constant clear so again integrate it with respect to eta then you will get u u equal to this is the integration of this one plus again you will insert one constant this is another constant written as a phi j phi is a function of j clear so if you assign this this look at this integration this is a function of eta and you are integrating it with respect to eta it simply means you will get another function of eta and say this is psi eta the another function say psi eta clear that's why we have we have written here psi star so that finally we will get two simple function one in the form of phi and another in the form of psi so now you are getting u as a function of phi and psi this is a function of phi xi and phi eta clear 
So this is the value of u. Now in the term of original variables, we are getting uxt equal to. So if you assign the original values, you will get uxt equal to phi x plus ct and psi x minus ct. Clear? Now to find the value of uxt, we have to find the values of these two functions, phi and psi. Clear? This is the general solution. Uxt equal to phi x plus ct and psi x minus ct because initial conditions are given to you. Now we have to find the values of these two functions. One is phi and another is psi. Clear? How can you find? For this we have to apply the initial conditions. Clear? One is the initial condition is look at this ux0 equal to fx. Another is ut means derivative of u with respect to t. This equal to gx. Okay. So apply the first condition ux0 equal to fx when you put t equal to 0 this is phi x plus psi x. So this is the first uh, this equation you will get after the first after applying the first initial condition. Now before applying the second initial condition you have to find the derivative of this with respect to t. If you differentiate it with respect to t you will get phi dash x plus ct and c is associated with t that's why you will uh, multiply this derivative phi dash x plus ct with c. Similarly, derivative of this with respect to t will be psi dash x minus ct and you will multiply it by minus c because minus c is a coefficient of t. Clear? So, when you put t equal to 0, then you will get utx 0 equal to gx. This is given c phi dash x t will be 0 minus c psi dash x. Clear? So, hope that you now you can find this value by your own clear so here we have actually the problem is we have to find the values of phi and psi but what we are getting we are getting in first equation we are getting phi x and psi x but in second we are getting phi dash x and psi dash x so from these two equations it is not possible to well find the value of phi x and psi x so what will we do we will integrate this equation, equation number 5.3.6, so that we will get, if you integrate it with respect to x, then you will get phi x and psi x, clear. So, integrate it, you will get phi x minus psi x. This equal to, you will get 1 by c will be here. You will get integration of gx dx, okay. So, integration of gx dx is in general, simple form. So, if you can assume that, suppose the starting point is x0, from x0 to any arbitrary point x, is there then you can write it in the form of a finite integration from x0 to x g t dt or you can say g tau d tau you can simply assume it not you can uh, do not take a t because here we have taken a t so you can have tau g tau or d tau or you can use any other variable for this g p and d p it's your choice because whenever we write finite definite integral so this variable has nothing to do because ultimately we will get the values in the term of these values okay so you can assume it's g tau d tau or g p d p clear so this equal to plus this is a integration cost so now we have phi x minus psi x equal to this value now look at this equation 5.3.5 here we have phi x plus psi x equal to fx and phi x minus psi x equal to this value so if you first add these two value you will get the value of phi x then subtract these two equations you will get the value of psi x so it means now you have to solve this equation 5.3.5 and 5.3.5 7 then you will get the value of phi x and psi x and these are the values of phi x and psi x clear so once you get the values of phi x and psi x here this is the required equation u x t equal to phi x plus ct psi x minus ct now you have to write these values for x plus ct and x minus ct it simply means in place of x now you have to write x plus ct in this equation and if you write all these things then you will get u x t equal to this expression so this expression is the solution of your any this problem with these initial conditions clear so this is the problem of uh, infinite string and solution of this problem is this one clear so i hope that you got the concept and now you can solve and now you can write the solution of this problem thank you